All right, listen up, brother. Sometimes you want to buy a precon, and sometimes you want to buy the face commander and build it from scratch. Let's talk about this guy and see what's going on with Valgavoth, Heror of Souls. I love this guy's name. I love his drip. I love his fashion, dude. He looks like a damn moth demon out there. Two black and a red. Legendary creature, Elder Demon. It's a 4-4 with flying, and Ward paid two life. Whenever an opponent loses life for the first time during each of their turns, put a plus one plus one counter on Valgavoth and draw a card. This is pretty diesel, man. 4-4 four, four for 4 with flying. And that ward, pay 2 life. Now in commander, if this guy gets too big, the pay 2 life will do almost nothing to protect this guy if somebody has a removal spell. But you know, it's something. Valgavoth helms the commander deck Endless Punishment, which is a pretty awesome deck, man. Right out of the box. And remember, damage causes loss of life. But loss of life doesn't count as damage. So instant speed direct damage will trigger our dude, and red is great at that. I think some of the folks out there who made videos on this guy read it wrong. The opponent has to lose life during their turn, so packing ways to do that in black and red shouldn't be too hard. You need instant speed stuff, you know, some key cards I'll detail below. And if you enjoy these videos, or if you really hate my guts, either way man, you better subscribe dude. Either way, you'll want to keep tabs on me so I don't escape. Now we have a Discord, of course we have a Patreon, all that fun stuff as well. Now if you bought the Precon and are looking for upgrades, this is the place to be, brother. But the Precon, this guy Helms, has some really sweet ways to trigger that life loss. You got the Bloodseeker out there. This guy got some new art and snacking on what appears to be Cardi B's arm out there. Look at those nails, buddy. Whenever a creature an opponent controls enters, you may have that player lose one life. And of course, the Keteract Parasite. This guy is one black mana for a creature horror. It's a 1-1. One -one. When an opponent draws a card, if you control a red permanent, you may have this guy deal one damage to that player. This little banger from Alara was down from $15. Now it's about four bucks. Harsh Mentor, I love the fact this guy is showing off them guns, buddy. I've always been a fan of this ability as a concept, but it isn't necessarily reliable. If it could hit soul rings and arcane signets, I'd be down to clown with this fella. Not a bad include. Cardur Doom Scourge, this is a great card, man. All those little goaded utility creatures are gonna get murked, probably by each other. Pretty nice value demon. Then we have Nightshade Harvester out there. This is the kind of effect we're looking for in this deck. It's a little pricey for what it does, four mana, but it is reliable. This will get you at least one, likely two Valgavoth triggers during a turn cycle. Fade Unraveler. This was another one that will trigger for three cards per turn cycle, assuming a four player game. Looks like he's up to no good in the night. Dude, he's unraveling that damn painting out there. What a tune. Then you have Mogus the God of Slaughter. Fantastic reprint. Down to a couple bucks, man. Two bucks for this guy. Get some new art. This is another one that's going to draw you cards and is a big beefy slapper if you get that devotion. Then we have the Rampaging Ferocidon out there. Two in a red. Creature Dinosaur. It's a 3 3 menace. Players can't gain life. Whenever another creature enters, Rampaging Ferocidon deals one damage to that creature's controller. All raptors are aggressive, but Ferocidon seem to enjoy their prey's pain, dude. What a weird thing to say about a dinosaur, man. You're anthropomorphizing it, alright? Settle down. This is symmetrical, so be careful. If you're in a creature-based deck, though, this can be really tough, man. Plus, you negate any incidental life gain you packed in your own deck. So, use this guy with caution. Then we have the classic out here with new art, Caravac the Merciless, 5 black and a red. Legendary creature, human shaman, it's a 5-4. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, Caravac deals damage equal to that spell's mana value to any target. Kind of the classic slug boss here. This has the ability to guarantee damage if your opponent casts basically anything during their turn. So that's it for the pre-con baddies. What else can we slot in? If you're building from scratch or upgrading the pre-con, this is the place to go. So listen, man, our dude is going to get big. So we want to trigger him, but we also want to blast our opponents with Soul's Fire. Two in a red for an instant target creature you control deals damage equal to its power to any target. Look at this cat, dude. He's a house cat. He's becoming a mansion cat out there at Johnny's back there, igniting the soul. The soul of the furry. And how about the hellish rebuke? Two in a black for an instant until end of turn. Permanents your opponent's control gain when this permanent deals damage to the player who cast hellish rebuke. Sacrifice this permanent, you lose two life. Get rebuked out there, dude. This is a fun little card that punishes people swinging their big ugly creatures your way. Need to include and can take that stuff right off the board. Lightning Bolt, you know, it's a classic. Several variations on that. It's removal, it's damage to an opponent, it's just a classic, man. 
So we also want to be dealing damage to everybody on their turns, and Roiling Vortex is a way to do that. One in a red for an enchantment. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, this deals one damage to them. Whenever a player casts a spell, if no mana was spent to cast that spell, Roiling Vortex deals five damage to that player. Has red, your opponents can't gain life this turn. You're out there roiling and boiling, dude, and we're in red. This card does so much. Let's get the roiling and boiling going, brother. And of course, we also have some wonderful pingers out there. The Thermo Alchemist is one in a red. Creature, Human Shaman, it's a 0-3 with Defender. This guy is tapped, deals one damage to each opponent. Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery spell, untap it. Listen, man, mana barbs. Symmetrical, but depending on the road you go down, can be a very powerful slug card. You're in black also, you know, so as long as you're not playing that Raptor, dude, you can put in some life gain effects too. Let's get goading with the Vengeful Ancestor, Tuna Red, Creature Spirit Dragon, it's a 3-4 with flying. Whenever this guy enters or attacks, goad target creature. Whenever a goaded creature attacks, it deals one damage to its controller. Oh yeah, dude, I love that goad. Plus this fellow is a 3-4 flyer that can bang and deal a little damage on your turn. Then we have Karazakar, the Eye Tyrant. This guy's three black and a red. Legendary creature Beholder, it's a 5-5. Five five. Whenever you attack a player, tap target creature that player controls and goad it. Whenever an opponent attacks another one of your opponents, you and the attacking player each draw a card and lose one life. Why does this guy have flying? Why doesn't he have flying? I mean, nobody's ever going to know. You know, he's floating around, dude. He should at least have a hovering. It's a new keyword ability I made up. And from the main set, we have a Razorkin Needle Boy. I don't know who this is supposed to be. Probably Pinhead from Hellraiser. It's not often we get new toys for Nekazar, man. This guy is substantially happier looking than uh, Pinhead, you know, but this is already like 11, 9, 10, 11 dollars. It's a nuts card for two mana, appears to be very high demand for this. Kind of similar to Underworld Dreams, classic commander card, just a classic card in general. Black, black, black for an enchantment, whenever an opponent draws a card, this deals one damage to that player. And you know, like Karabek, we want to punish other people casting spells, and we have a rug of smothering out there. Three generic mana, artifact, creature, construct, it's a 1-3 with flying. Whenever a player casts a spell, they lose one life for each spell they cast this turn, dude. It's a flying carpet, you know, but this one killed Aladdin, brother. And it hits you too, so be careful of that. So how do we win with something like this, you know? We have those pinger effects, we have a big commander that's going to be out there swinging in, he's flying around. We also have these smaller damage effects, things like that, those aren't necessarily going to win the game. But we do have about a million damage doublers, things that increase damage one way or another in red. Angrath's Marauders. If a source you control would deal damage to a permanent or player, it deals double damage to that permanent or player instead. Now be careful because some of the effects we talked about deal damage and some use life loss. If it causes life loss, this won't do anything. So if you're building in this direction, you might want to include damage effects instead. Then we got the Fiendish Duo out there, 4 red red, Creature Devil, it's a 5-5 five five with First Strike. If a source would deal damage to an opponent, it deals double that damage to that player instead. So that's not a source you control, that's any source, man. Here we go. Love this card, it's about 35 cents now. You also have cards like City on Fire, Fiery Emancipation, I didn't use them in my build, but those are good too. And of course, we have the ever stalwart Wound Reflection, so this is 5 and a black for an enchantment. At the beginning of each end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life they lost this turn. Damage causes loss of life, dude, right there. Only 2 bucks for this card, you know, but not for this baby. All the way back up to 14 bucks, the Archfiend of Despair. 6 black black for a giant demon, it's a 6-6 six, six with flying. Your opponents can't gain life, and at the beginning of each end step, each opponent loses life equal to the life that player lost this turn fantastic card. Now don't forget we're also putting plus one plus one counters on our dude. Black and red you don't have a ton of plus one plus one counter synergy but you might want to hunt for some cards that play in that space like this guy Uncivil Unrest. Four and a red for an enchantment. Non-token creatures you control have a riot. If a creature you control with a plus one plus one counter on it would deal damage to a permanent or player it deals double that damage instead. Fantastic card with a big old ogre kick in it. How about the Aki Battle Squad? So this is 5 and a red, Creature Goblin Samurai, it's a 6-6. Six, six. Whenever one or more modified creatures you control attack, untap all modified creatures you control. After this phase, there's an additional combat phase, so your commander, of course, is a modified creature. This ability triggers only once each turn. Big, beefy Goblin Squad with oversized Molten Weaponry, brother, that's Basher Commander, dude. 
Now we talked about some cards that punish opponents on draw. Spiteful Visions, that's in the pre-con also. You may want to include some wheels out there. These types of cards are great for refilling your hand and a strong suit of red, but you could definitely lean into that. I love red, I love wheels. Dude, I put a bunch of wheels in my deck, but check this guy out. Sizon the Perverter of Truth. Three black black, legendary creature, demon spirit, it's a 6-5. At the beginning of each player's upkeep, that player loses two life and draws two cards. Man, I guess you're giving your friends cards, but you know what? The game's got to end one way or another, dude. Getting into Nekazar territory with this stuff. And you know, I just wanted to throw this in there. My favorite for a slug deck is Painful Quandary. This is three black black for an enchantment. Whenever an opponent casts a spell, that player loses five life unless they discard a card. Damn, dude, this card is absolutely brutal. I love this card. Happy to see it's down to like $2. Now, if you want to get real spicy, you get that demon sub theme going. We got the Herald of Slanesh out there. Demon spells you cast cost two less to cast, and other demons you control have haste, man. This lady's going to show you indulgence without regret, delight without boundaries, gratifications beyond count. Hmm, sounds interesting. Sounds like a Tuesday night at my house. Get your cost reduction, give your dude haste. All right, not bad. And while not a demon himself, we have Raphael, the fiendish savior out there. He's a devil noble. It's a 4-4 four, four with flying. Other demons you control get plus one, plus one, have lifelink. Also devils, imps, tieflings, all that stuff. At the beginning of each end step, if a creature card was put into your graveyard from anywhere this turn, create a little devil guy out there. The lifelink is the bomb on your commander. Now the cool thing about demons is that they can fly over the top, lots of them have trample too. And listen man, you just look for those slug demons out there in a slug deck, let's talk about this dude, the Sower of Discord. For black black creature demon, it's a 6-6 six, six with flying. As he enters, choose two players. Whenever damage is dealt to one of the chosen players, the other chosen player also loses that much life. Brutal. Now Pestilence is a great include, but the first thing I thought of when I saw this guy was the Pestilence Demon. So this guy's five black 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 creature demon it's a seven six with flying pestilence demon deals one damage to each creature and each player for one black mana this guy is great great way to deal damage to your opponents you can do this at instant speed but you may have noticed a lot of high mana value cards and so have i brother if you're building into wheels maybe snag yourself some damn reanimation cards and build yourself a reanimation suite now i do have a list it's not budget of course but as a matter of principle I don't slot in cards like Shieldred and Orcish Bowmasters, but those are good includes as well. Maybe Wizards is going to ban those cards. Who knows, dude? They have control of the format now. My list is like 170 bucks, but includes quite a few cards from the pre-con, so check it out. Nikki G, better commander, signing off.